Thanks everybody for those that are joining us live. This is the first time we've actually run this workshop via this method. It's normally done in a classroom. In a physical physical classroom, that's how we've done it before. And the difficulties we have with that is actually getting all of the schools to join us into one location yeah. and get out of school for an afternoon, which is logistically not easy to do. No. Nope. So our logic is that we can do it in this method and we can then share that video content for anybody that is not able to join us today. Yeah. Uh, so anybody that can't join us today or anybody that wants to watch this uh, at subsequent company programs, they can hopefully watch this content and it yeah. saves us having to go through that logistical nightmare every year. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so um, for those that don't know, I'm Gary King, so I sit on the board of the West Yorkshire uh, team for your enterprise. Yeah. Absolutely, vice chair. Vice chair. Yeah, vice chair and Amir Hafid. So um, most of you will have seen me by now, the area manager for West Yorkshire and now South Yorkshire as well, which is why we've included uh, both areas uh, to be a part of this digital workshop. Um, and obviously, logistically, it just makes a lot more sense. Fab. So should we get straight on to it? Yeah, let's get on to the content. Right, fine. So let me share screen here and we go bingo. Can everybody see that okay? Yep. Fab. That's good. Okay, so let's jump straight in. So this is a digital presentation of the company program digital workshop for 2019-2020 by yeah. Gary and Amir. And again, the purpose of this is that we can share this with anybody that can't join us this afternoon or anybody that wants to watch this at a later date and it saves the logistics of getting everybody together in a classroom. So, mm -hmm. Amir, I'm just going to hand over to you to do the presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Right, so let's crack straight into it. Um, what we've done is we have tailored a lot of the information from the business advisor and the uh, centre lead sort of a, it's like a, a digital handbook that we usually give out at the beginning of the year. So what we've done is we've just tailored that um, and I've sort of narrowed the focus and I'm giving you some key dates as well. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Young Enterprise Online, um, a little bit about the milestones as well. Um, and then I'm going to go into detail about some of the maybe problem areas or some of the areas of where people have told us that they're struggling um, or that they would need more support. Um, so that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at today. It's developing your employability skills, your entrepreneurial skills, uh, and hopefully setting you up for success in your future careers. Um, and hopefully this program, the company program, like I've told you before, it will do that. You will be awarded a certificate at the end of the year that you can show to UCAS um, or to future employers. Um, and you, you, you know, that will sort of verify your participation on the program. And you've also got the assessment that all of you should have done by now. I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but the questionnaire, at the of, as soon as you log on to Enterprise Online, you should have all done that. And at the end of the year, you'll be doing another one as well. Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to move through. I'm going to flick through some of these. You can see some of, the, some of these sort of uh, figures here uh, in terms of how many thousands of students that participate on the programme as well. So there's some really, really big numbers there. Uh, you can just see the amount of impact that we have um, as a program and, and, and as a charity, really, a national charity. Um, I'm going to flick through to get to the important information because we are, I'm conscious of time. Um, the two types of company that you obviously could have set up as, like I mentioned, the commercial enterprise, a normal profit-making enterprise, or a social enterprise, you know, I mean... Uh, how do you feel about that? What's, you know? Yeah, look, I think it's what we want to do with this program is replicate business. Of course, you know, when, when people are setting up a business in real life, it's either a commercial entity or it's a social enterprise. Absolutely. So, you know, we, we, we're looking to replicate what people will witness as and when in the future to start a business as much as possible. Yeah, and I mean, it's always about having these societal objectives, and that goes a long way when you get to the judging criteria. Um, it does count for quite a lot, to be honest. So, you do want to make sure you are sustainable. Um, again, I'm going to be touching on that in a minute as well, but you really want to be following the judging criteria as well. So pay attention, whatever, which, which type of enterprise you choose, 
will lead you in sort of slightly different directions. You can be a commercial enterprise that has social objectives, not necessarily, you don't have to classify yourself as a full-blown social enterprise where they would reinvest the money back into the organization. So do think about that because that is important. Um, there are videos to look at as well on there, so that's something you need to be aware of. Um, I think that's on milestone two or three where it talks about the type of enterprise you are. Once you've chosen the type of enterprise, go to the company profile information page and when you're on there, there's a, there's a little sort of tick box and you will tick which type of enterprise you choose as a team. You'll find that right at the top of the company profile information page. Okay, fab. Okay, so a little bit about Young Enterprise Online. I'm really hoping, because I've been drilling it into everybody, about the Young Enterprise Online system. You should all have your usernames and passwords by now. If not, make sure you get in touch with me or your teacher, because there would have been a welcome email that sent all your usernames and passwords to them. Um, you should be working your way through the milestones that you can see on there. So all the way from starting up to winding down and looking back at next steps at the end. Um, this is your Bible, you need to follow it. Logistically, I've already been into a couple of schools that have said to me they've gone all the way to sort of business planning and now they're working their way back. Well, what's happened is you're gonna miss a lot of the essential information. So you need to be aware of this. You need to be aware that other companies are gonna have a competitive advantage. They have done things that you haven't done or if they've been reading the operating framework and your team hasn't. So it's really, really important that you adhere to the rules and regulations of setting up and running your student enterprise because that is what you are at the end of the day throughout the duration of this course. After the program has ended and a lot of teams, we've had three last year that wanted to carry on, you're able to wind down and set up and run as you like. But whilst you're under Young Enterprises remit, um, you need to be aware of the operating framework and, and how that works for you as a team. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Again, a little bit about the route map. Um, I've said to you there from, you know, eight key milestones that you need to be working through. Um, you can have a look and download that online as well on the actual website on your enterprise online. If you go to the bottom and go to resources, you'll find it there. So make sure you have a look at that. Um, let's have a look at some new things for 2019-20. Um, so what you've got is for each milestone, there's now a milestone essential section. So this little to-do list, which is really, really good because a lot of the time I get flustered. So what they'll do is start going off onto different topics. The essentials is, I mean, you can see a little example here where it says milestone one essentials. Four key things to look through in the milestone. So for example, one of them was just meeting the BA. You know, have they done that, tick it off, move on to the next point, take a look at the competitions page, making sure that they don't miss out on anything as well. Um, there are a number of national competitions you need to be aware of. If you go to the bottom, the bottom banner at the bottom of your enterprise online, there is a specific little tab that says competitions on there and it gives you all the national competitions. If there are any local competitions, I will be giving you those opportunities I will put you in touch, I will tell the teacher, send the lead um, about that and then they will disseminate that information to you, okay? So that's something to be aware of. Those are your milestone essentials. Um, there are fast track guides as well, but when I came into your school, you will have seen this thing before because I will have run through it with you guys. Um, and I've talked about the three key stakeholders, you and your team that are taking autonomy of this program, the centre lead who is going to help you and support you in class and the business advisor as well who is coming from us. They represent us as a charity and what we stand for and they're mm -hmm. coming to support you in your business development. Okay. All right. So I'm going to quick run through the milestones to give you an overview. One of the most important things is obviously skills development, um, you know, and this is absolutely pivotal to the way that we operate um, at, at Young Enterprise. And research has told us when we have worked with, uh, well, these large corporations, the HSBCs of the world, the ASDAs, 
um, Santander, where we are now at the moment, what they've said to us is that research has showed them that these are the skills, communication, confidence, financial capability, teamwork, organization, problem solving, resilience and initiative, and they've added to that digital skills. These are the skills that they're looking for in future uh, employees. So, you know, when you go for an interview, um, when you are, you know, throughout the duration of work, these are the things that they're picking up on. These are the things that they want you to have. Yeah, and I think from my, my perspective, not only do I sit on the West Yorkshire board, but I've, I've been a business advisor and, you know, a big part of the criteria when we're scoring teams against other teams at competition level is what they've learned through the process because this isn't about going through a process and winning this is about going through a process and learning Absolutely. so you've got employability skills for your future career yeah and you know if you can win alongside that then that's a bonus isn't it so Absolutely. you know please bear in mind that while you're having a little bit of fun and you are taking this seriously everything that you do on this company program is about learning and developing your skill set yeah. so that you are employable in the future. 100%. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, again, we've mentioned the startup evaluation. I'll just, let's just go back to that. So, like I said, that will come up with a banner for the teams that are just sort of logging on now or just started the process. Um, as soon as you log into your enterprise online, you will see a blue banner that will come up that says, please fill in the starting up questionnaire. You need to do this because we want to measure the impact and how far you've grown throughout the year. So if your confidence was low, you know, you're know you going to be marking that at a two out of 10 maybe. By the end of the year, and let's say you're able to get up on stage and talk in front of 100 people, that is a massive achievement. And that means you know your confidence might have grown. And this is what we found every single year um, this is what happens really and we have some absolutely amazing testimonials from students um, a lot of the teams and students that do this um, last year um, I've had three different teams uh, I've had a, a lad from Dixon's Ollerton the girls from Weatherby High School um, you know students like this North Halifax Grammar um, we've had Students actually come and want to be part of it next year to help the new students because they've enjoyed the process so much. Absolutely. So, you know, just bear that in mind that that might be you at the end of the year um, and we'd encourage you to be part of alumni as well. So the operating framework is, like I said, this is a really, really important document. Um, it's been changed slightly from last year. Uh, this has got all the legal, the insurance stuff, the financial parts of the business. Um, and just clearly explains to you how to operate your business, things that you can and can't do. Um, there is a rule change, which I've mentioned to most teams, but again, I'll read through it. You, it, well, it says it in there in red, if you can see, if not, listen to what I'm saying. Student companies are no longer allowed to trade on eBay or Amazon, and will only be permitted to trade on Young Enterprise Marketplace. So that's our dedicated you know, online trading platform that we've created and a lot of money has been spent on that. Um, so you can only trade on there and create a profile on there. Previously, they've permitted people, you know, adults over the age of 18 to set up accounts on behalf of students as long as they were responsible for them. Um, but this year, they've decided not to go along with that, not to do that. Um, and trading on eBay and Amazon is now prohibited. So, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, and make sure you follow that because you will be penalised um, and will be insured if you do go on Amazon or eBay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, a little bit more about the insurance cover. I'm not going to dwell on it, but I want you to have a good read. The first thing you need to be doing at one of your first meetings um, is you need to be downloading the operating framework and you want somebody in charge of that. So you want the managing director to have a printout or maybe the operations director, somebody needs to have read through it thoroughly so you know what you can and can't do. So if an idea was to come up in, in Milestone 3 for idea generation, you need to be able to say, look, well, I've read this and we can't do cosmetics um, because of this reason, X, Y, Z. Okay? So make sure that you do follow those rules. 
uh, and we're going to go on to product approval as well in a sec. And look, you know, a, a reminder of what I said earlier, you know, we're trying to put in place here real life conditions that happen in actual businesses. So you're going to have insurance if you're ever running a business or employing a business. And within that insurance, there's going to be do's and don'ts. Absolutely. In some marketplaces, whether it be product or service or geography, there are certain restrictions on where you can and can't trade. So, we, you know, some of these we're doing for the benefit of those on the program, but it's also trying to replicate the reality of running your a business, business yeah. in, in your future careers. 100%. Okay, a little bit about IP as well, intellectual property. So you might have learned a little bit about that in your business studies class. Um, there is a section on the operating framework that goes into detail about the copyright and intellectual property law, um, what you can do, some top tips on how to avoid infringing intellectual property as well. So have a really, really good look at that. Um, make sure that you are not directly or overtly imitating or copying, um, using existing company names or trademarks or copyrights. That is really, really important. There's a really good video on Young Enterprise Online as well for you to have a look at. So, you know, submit, you know, when you submit your product or civil approval form um, via the online version as well, you'll be able to, uh, it will ask you certain questions where, you, where, where really, it's asking you whether you are adhering to that intellectual property law. Okay. Now, this is a big one, and we've already had a few questions about it as well. The HSBC UK bank account. Um, we got a message out this week that I have added to the PowerPoint that I want to share with everybody because it's really, really important. There's been a few mistakes um, from some of the companies that have already sent um, the mandates off to, uh, to HSBC and they have been returned to Young Enterprise Head Office with sort of uh, voids on them. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But for the people that haven't done it, you need to obviously download, I mean, you, we're processing bank accounts from now. So you need to download and complete the application form and the mandate to open the, the, the bank account. Um, you, there's no branch involvement this year, so you don't have to go in. Um, and actually physically, you know, speak to a cashier or someone like that. It's all done online. Um, you will apply by post, send your forms off to the Leicester branch address, which is instructed. There are very, very clear instructions on why you're online. You need to follow it to the letter, and this is one of the key issues. Um, and then all the information about opening a bank account is on why you're online, um, and it's all in milestone one as well. So that gives you a, a good good overview. So under company finances and under resources. Um, and then on the next slide, we should be able to see, yeah, there was, I mean, there are some, you can see there, there are some under resources, which you'll find at the top banner, um, you will actually see your essential student company documents. And on there you'll find, for example, the certificate of insurance and the certificate of incorporation you really want to download them and print them off and keep them with you uh, the memorandum and articles of association as well you, you know that would be very very useful for you to have um, yeah again download them they're on the resources section so this is the uh, the, the message that we received um, i received this and, and a number of other student teams have received it as well so it says here, to date, 226 applications have been received by HSBC uh, to open accounts. Um, you can see there that some have been returned due to errors, a lot of these, to be honest. It's causing delays in opening the business bank accounts, and there's a lot of, sort of frustration as well, because there's a lot of backwards and forwards. Um, so, so there's a list below of the top 15 errors that could occur. So this is what's been happening. Um, in the first few weeks of this process. So make sure that you're not doing these problems or you're not, you know, you need to follow the process clearly on your enterprise online. Well, there's things like the application form isn't even, you know, complete. Are people are using correction fluid, so you can't use, um, what is it, Tipex? Tipex. Uh, not specifying signatories, errors, not initialed, um, no incorporation certificate, 
So like I just said to you, you need that. Um, you've used the teacher's name, there's no mandate, company name on incorporation certificate mandate, they don't actually match different company names that put on there. Um, panel B of the mandate is not completed. You know, I mean, the, 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 you can see there's a few more. The roles aren't specified on page eight of the application, so your individual roles. Um, and look, we, you know, we, you don't, know. we don't need to follow the detail. They're all there, but, you know, the fact of the matter is yeah. that the instructions are clear. If you've got any difficulty at all in understanding what the instructions mean, ask your teacher, ask your business advisor, ask them here, but get some advice. But it's, in a, and again, it comes back to how, you do business going forward. Sure, so if yeah. you if you send in the wrong or incomplete paperwork, it's going to delay the process. So from running a business point of view, that's not good. So let's try and get it right first time. Mm. If you've got any questions, just ask. Yeah. Yeah. Milestone two is all about creating a board of directors. So I know for a fact a lot of people are at this stage or have moved past this stage now. So hopefully you've got a strong managing director, someone who is supportive and is leading you and you're all happy to be working within the team and for them and within with them. Finance directors, the marketing directors, sales, operations, HR, digital, sustainability, and your company secretary who should be taking minutes of the meetings. Okay, generate a new idea for milestone three. Um, so what I have seen is that quite a few of you are at that stage now um, where you're coming up with loads of ideas and then narrowing it down, which is absolutely excellent. Um, of course, you know, the whole point of this is to generate as many ideas as you can so that you can really focus in on, on the best ones and really come to some sort of a business analysis, which you can do in Milestone 3. Um, there are some really good brainstorming activities as well on there that are going to help you facil facilitate the session. Um, and you can see here that there's some really good sort of case studies. So I'll definitely use those. Have a look at them. There's one here, for example, you know, beanie hats. Um, and then it gives you explains about their initial purchase and how they bought it, how much capital they needed to start the business, all that kind of stuff, you know, suppliers and market research. So you can see there, the sort of the way that a business would work and how it's actually systematically gone through, how they've gone through that. And then you've also got a really, really good, um, uh, like a document there for actually creating and coming up with ideas as well on Milestone 3. So use these resources wisely. Um, don't neglect them because they, they will help you come up with stuff. Absolutely. Okay, a bit about business planning. So, yeah, there's, like I said, there's a new digital product approval form this year uh, that we are piloting. So please, please, I've already had three submissions that I have approved. Um, so this is really, really good. One of them I sent back with some more information because they needed some support. So it will come up in three ways to me, to my system, once you've done this. Um, you need to, once you've submitted, your product approval form, you are just going to be going through these like uh, check boxes. So it'll keep coming up. Have you thought about health and safety? Have you, have you been copying, uh, you know, have you thought about copyright? All this kind of stuff. Takes you through the boxes. When you click submit, it comes through to me and it will come up with a three tiered system. I'll either get a green one, which is most likely, you know, the product is fine. Uh, it'll come up with a, an amber one or it'll come up with a red one, which needs looking at. Um, you will also have that rating and you'll be able to see that. Um, and I will then send it back with feedback to let you know where to improve it or to look back on the operating framework because it's something that you can't do if it's come back with a red. Okay, so we're looking for the green, the approval. Once it's been approved, you're going to get a congratulations email and you're going to be very, very happy. Okay, launching. So... Let's just go through the actual steps of launching your business. So making sure you've got product or service approval. Of course, that's the first one. All the ideas have gone. Let's get the okay. Do you have a product approval for all your products from your enterprise? If you don't have the product approval, you can't trade at the trade fairs. You can't come to the competitions. Very important. It's the first step for launching. Finalizing your business plan and your marketing strategy. So now we're tweaking, we're going into a bit more detail, we're finalising the fine bits. Does everyone in the team know what their roles are? 
Are people adhering to the rules? Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Um, and how are you going to engage your customers and supporters? Have you targeted certain niches? You know, it's no good saying everyone's my customer. You know, let's target a group. Let's say these people are the most appropriate. These are the ones that are more likely going to purchase. That's the target market. Have a read up, and there's a hell of a lot of resources on there for that. Number three for launching your enterprise, ordering your materials and start producing your actual product or service. So, you know, within that, have you considered sustainability? Where are you purchasing from? You know, a lot of suppliers, some of them aren't very sustainable, and some of them make that a USP of their actual business. So can you, you know, tap into that and say, we only use the eco-friendly suppliers, for example, you know, because they're reducing their harmful impact on the environment, and that's a company that we want to be associated with. It makes you look good, it makes them look good, everyone's happy. Um, and, and, and it is obviously a positive step forward. So think about that. Again, competition-wise, they do look at this kind of thing um, because it's forward, forward-facing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number four, making sure your HSBC bank account is open. We've talked about that. Go to the accounts package. Have a look at it on the accounts page. How to do that? We've just touched on it. And number five is reviewing the company of the year judging criteria and identifying strategies for collecting the feedback and information as well. So how are you going to collect regular feedback from your customers and sports to help you improve your enterprise? That is so important, and we're going to talk about it because it's part of We've got a new thing called 360 feedback, which I'm going to touch on. And that is a, is a new element in the judging criteria. So it's something to be aware of. Okay. So you can see here, there's a screenshot of the actual company of the year 2020 guidance. Um, and this goes through in detail, everything that you need to know, split up into the four parts, you know, the enterprise, the impact and legacy, the team's journey, um, so and the journey travelled. So have a good, good read of this. It tells you what to do, what to not do. It tells you what percentages are. So the team interview is actually worth 40% of the overall marks. You know, we are going to be doing, we're probably going to be doing a similar workshop in the new year for the company of the year guidance. So I'm not going to go into it too much. But I would advise you to read it on it now because that might mean you adapt your product slightly. Okay. This is the new thing that has come up. This is the new element of the actual um, uh, judging criteria. So it's called 360 feedback. Uh, it replaces what we had previously called digital presence. Uh, and this is for students to demonstrate how they've engaged your audiences and what type of feedback have you had and you need to explain any actions as a result of that so when you've been to trade fairs when you've uh, spoken to other teachers other people at school uh, when you've engaged with customers what have they said and how have you uh, what's the word sort of worked on that how have you changed your product to affect basically what's come to you so they said this needs tweaking or we don't like this color for example of that product so this isn't suitable for children or whatever else you know feedback we have this feedback we've had this information or suppliers you know even feedback from them so, and all the stakeholders that have come to your business advisor okay so it's really really important it's worth 20 percent of your overall marks really important you pay attention to this and you need to evidence how you have tweaked and changed feedback throughout the year. Okay, running your enterprise. So this is sort of moving forward and growing it, uh, a little bit more about scope as well. So, I mean, you can see there's there's, there's a bit about promotion and selling on there, uh, a little bit about financial management as well, so making sure if you go online, you need to keep, obviously, your spending, your income, your expenditure, uh, cash in, cash out, go on the accounts part of the actual website and you'll find everything on there um, in terms of the money in and money out really. So keep up with that. Don't come to the end of the year and start thinking, right, well now we want to get all these receipts in and whatnot. You want to be doing it systematically. If you make a sale, record it from now. 
you don't want to be catching up at the end of the year because it's you're going to be you're going to be in bother, uh, and it's going to it's going to be a really hard process if you do that. So be consistent and be patient with it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah they're all right on there. Quite self-explanatory. Uh, a little bit about the competitions. Um, you can see that the company of the year. So obviously every year, student companies from across the UK are crowned company of the year at the national competition finals in London in June. Now I'm going to give you the actual provisional dates that we have on here. So uh, no, 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 UK and the European finals. All right. So June the 17th is at the County Hall in London. That's if you get to. If you get to that stage, you will be invited. So just bear that in mind from now, you know, let's be optimistic. We want to get there. Uh, obviously, before getting to the nationals, you need to compete at the local, county, and the regional levels. So the provisional dates I've put on there for the South Yorkshire final, uh, Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2020. Uh, and for the West Yorkshire final, we've got Thursday, the 7th of May. Okay, so two days after. Now, the Yorkshire and Humber Regional Final has already been booked in, and that's going to be, so the winner of the York, South Yorkshire Final, winner of the West Yorkshire Final, winner of North Yorkshire and East Yorkshire uh, and Humber are going to be meeting at the National Railway Museum on the 4th of June, um, which, is, which is a fabulous uh, uh, venue. We were there last year, we had a great time uh, jumping on all trains and that, so it was really good. Yeah, and I think, look, you know, this is something you've got to aim for starting now. And, you know, all of these learnings, all of these processes you go through, the products, the team selection, all of that is about getting to the South Yorkshire or the West Yorkshire final, mm. where you're going to be competing with all the other schools taking part. You're going to be pitching your products and services. You're going to be on stage presenting. You're going to be having interviews. You're going to be presenting profit and loss accounts and financial reports. Yeah. So you need a grasp of how to run a successful business in mm. order to compete at that stage. And those businesses that, that win the South Yorkshire and West Yorkshire finals and go through to Yorkshire and Humber really are on a roll at that point. And we've had oh, some yeah. great successes in the last five or six years Brilliant with products. teams from Western South Yorkshire getting through and winning the Yorkshire and Humber final mm. and actually getting down to County Hall in London. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. They do so well, um, and we want to keep that up because we want to win. Yeah, and so and did a team from Yorkshire last year actually won the UK final and got through to Europe? Not to, not the UK one, but they got to down to the county final. Got yeah, down yeah, to the yeah, county yeah. final, right. So yeah. the, uh, that, sorry, down to county hall in London. Yeah. So national finals, yeah, one of the last 12. So, yeah. So, you can see their bath, I think that's, oh, bath. So they're the ones, I think they were from... Um, I think down, down south somewhere, a team down there. So that bunch of girls created uh, bath soaps, um, flavoured, I think, I, think could, I don't know, the bath salts and stuff. Okay. So that's what they created um, in 2019. So they won the actual national vinyls. Ah, mm. yeah. So you can have a look at it. There's a case study on, on Young Enterprise's actual website about them. Some of the uh, national competitions, I've put them on here, but like I said, you know, really, you want to be exploring Young Enterprise online and doing this yourself. Um, but just so you're aware, you can see that the uh, first competition is actually over now. So the hashtag Meet the Board Instagram competition uh, closed on the 23rd of October. So I'm interested to know if anyone actually did that or had a look on there. The Really the big one, the next one, is the logo competition, which I have mentioned a few times to different schools. Again, that's an Instagram one. Um, be resourceful, you know. I said to you, you know, go out there and speak to speak to graphic design agency. Go speak to market marketing, you know, digital marketing agencies. Are you able to help us? You know, we're a student team. Leverage what you've got. You know, you're a young team. Can you do something for them PR wise? Can you get them in your school paper? Can you, you know, it's about being clever in this in this program. Um, the smarter you are, you know, the further you'll get. Really, absolutely. Okay. Uh, winding up, so I will be, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I'm going to be talking about this on the next workshop, but really I did want to um, make this clear because I did have uh, a good 15 minutes discussion with one of the teams about this actually uh, the other day where we were talking about, I mean if you look at the red section, if you can actually see this, 
It says that student companies must not explicitly state their intention to donate profits to charities as part of their marketing or trading activities, as this contravenes the rules of the Charity Commission, which states that a charity can't fundraise for another charity. So if charities can't give to another charity, you can't say, let's say you've made dog collars, right? And they're a young enterprise student company and they want to say, um, you know what, we want to give 10% of our profits to Dogs Trust. Yeah. You can't do that. Um, because you enterprise with a charity and dogs trust with a charity. Okay, so it's not going to work. Uh, and if you read the operating framework, you would know that. So be please be aware. But you can see here, if you go to the charitable giving section on the operating framework, there is a caveat. Because once the students have paid back the winding up fee, um, and paid back the investors and finalised your accounts, and you've closed the company, you can then decide what to do with your remaining profits. So, you might choose to donate to a good cause. You could give it back to your school, don't as part of a legacy for future students to take part in another company program next year, if you like. Or you can just split the profits between the team members, you know, which most people do. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's absolutely it's your profit. You've made that money, you worked hard for it. Um, so, you guys can do what you like. If you want to then give it to Dogs Trust, like we said with the example, you're more than, you know, you can do that but you just can't explicitly state it in your marketing materials. But look, this again is like any other business. The more successful you are as a business, the more money and profit you make as a business, the more you can give yourself a dividend. Yeah. So, you know, if, if your sole intention other than winning this competition is to earn a couple of quid, mm -hmm. then the more profit you make, the more you can distribute to you and your team. It really is as simple as that. Yeah, yeah it really is. Put money in your own pocket. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And then you've got Milestone 8 as well. How are we doing for time? What are we on? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, not too bad. So you've got there um, a little bit about looking back. Again, I am going to go into more detail about this, but you are going to get a certificate of achievement. Like I said, it looks a bit like what you can see on the screen there. So I've just screen grabbed it. It tells you how much time you have spent on the program and on the different tasks, which is amazing. And it maps your skills development on the actual certificate of achievement against where you started at the beginning of the year. That's why I was saying it's imperative that you do complete the startup questionnaire and then you do it at the end as well because there's going to be like a really cool graph that shows your growth in each of those eight different uh, skills areas. Okay? So be aware of that. It needs to be done. All right. The alumni network is something that really we really do want to uh, promote to be honest, it's been going for a number of years and it's a fantastic opportunity for you to network as well with other people that have done your enterprise. There's a lot of celebrities that have done it. There's a lot of notable people, uh, a lot of characters that have done it in the world. Um, and I'd, I would definitely suggest logging onto the website on there, even if you just go to your enterprise website and just go to get involved, uh, where there's a banner that says get involved, alumni network, go on there and have a really good look through, sign up, put your details in, and they will keep you in touch with any events um, and any goings on uh, in terms of alumni and where they're invited and they get invited to speak and other stuff as well. So really do um, stay in touch with them and stay in touch with me um, for local guys, you know. I've got, I think we should have two or three people this year talking who were, you know, past winners, people that have done it uh, previously, who are really successful as well. So they're going to be the area finals. Uh, if, if, you know, if you want that to be you, join up to the alumni network so we can we can keep in touch after the program. Yeah, we've got people that have uh, done Young Enterprise 20 years ago and they're now yeah. running successful multi-million pound businesses with teams and all the rest of it. You know, the sky really is the limit as far as this, this program is concerned. You know, you can take this as far and achieve what you want to achieve um, so joining the alumni is, is, is a great opportunity to mix with some of those people and learn from them uh, and aspire to be them. Okay. I mean, there's a little bit about impact here. Um, you know, they the looked at, as a person here says, within a few months, I went, I went from being a shy one to talking to strangers on the street selling the product, you know, like at the, the, the trade fairs, which you will do, um, and then doing presentations in front of hundreds of people. Um, at the area final or at the national finals. 
Uh, and you can just see there as well on that graph how worthwhile was company program when you've completed it. 76% of people said it was very worthwhile. So like I said, do put as much effort as, in as you can this year. Fab. Okay, a little, some useful contacts there. Program support if you need it. Uh, there's a lovely woman called Jenny down in head office. So if you ever need it, you can go through straight, straight through to her if you have any specific questions about the program. Um, but I would always encourage you, just message me, send me a message first. It's probably something that I can clear up in the first instance. Um, I've put also on there the pre-registration site, which still has a lot of the videos on there that you can access. And a few other, for example, for the business advisor and the Zenta Lead, there's quite good um, useful toolkits for them to have a look at. Um, and definitely your enterprise online as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, just reiterating some of the key dates actually for this. So national competitions, we've ran through them. I'm not going to go through them again. The logo one, 5th of December is coming up. Um, the local and the regional competitions. So you've got the South Yorkshire, the West Yorkshire Regional. We've just talked about those. You know what dates they're on the 5th and the 7th of May. And the White Rose Trade Fair, which I've not mentioned for West Yorkshire, but also South Yorkshire can come to that if you are interested. I know it's quite far, but if you're interested in coming to those, by all means. Uh, that's going to be on Sunday, the 16th of February. So get that in your diaries from now. And I encourage the Centre Leads also to make um, a note of that, please, if you haven't already. Broadway Shopping Centre is in Bradford. It's a new shopping centre. Uh, and it's a new one for us as well as an organisation. So we're really pleased that they're on board as a trade fair. And that's going to be on Saturday, the 1st of February um, next year. And then you have for South Yorkshire at the moment, we're looking at doing French Gate Shopping Centre in Doncaster. So uh, and that's to be confirmed at the moment. Um, but as soon as I hear back from them, what we're going to do is I'm going to send the date out to all the centre leads so you've all got an opportunity there to, um, to to know what's going on with that. Okay. And look, these these are a great opportunity for you to test your product, test your sales skills, make the changes you need to do, and also make a few quid so you can generate some working capital. And yeah. I know when I've been a business advisor in the past, seeing schools go to the White Rose trade yeah. fair yeah. and really pitching their products and services, looking at the competition, talking to the customers earning some money, getting great feedback on the sales, the marketing, the proposition. Yeah. It's a fantastic opportunity just for you to step up a gear and really hone your offering, mm. make a few more quid and make yourself a little bit more competitive. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, it looks like we've come to end. Um, I hope that was okay. I hope it wasn't too tedious for you. Um, that was all the key information that we wanted to get across. Um, does anyone have any questions, please? If you want to just shout out, tell me your name and your school, um, then that would that would really help us. And, you know, it might be a frequently asked question as well. Um, so, is there anything that anyone would like to share in the first instance? Oh, we've got a question. Where can we access this after recording? Brilliant. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to edit it. Hopefully, um, and what we'll do is we're going to put it on. Is it a Dropbox? Are we going to? How are we going to do well, it? We'll, we'll like figure it? that out. But we'll we, figure we it out. send a link out, don't we? Yeah. So we're going to send you a link out in the next few days, um, and then hopefully you'll have all that information with all those dates as well, um, and we'll go from there. Okay. So that just leaves us to say thank you for joining us. Thanks for being patient, and thanks for being part of this pilot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah this digitally. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know that's the that's the introduction to the company program for 2019 2020 and um, thanks for those that have watched live and for those that are watching this on replay thanks for joining us if you've got any questions you know where to contact us absolutely thank you Gary as well for thank, joining us thank you very much <laughs> bye bye yeah, cheers